So that input on the right side, you'll see a page number. So this page number is the total, right? You just scroll down to the bottom and look at it here, six, and put in six, okay? And go back up. And here, when did you sign this agreement? You have to update this one to match with the signing date of your agreement. So 16th of May, that's where uh, what date we put on the listing contract. So the listing contract, if you go to the bottom, page five, you see sign, deliver on the 16th. So we put 16 here. And then the address, city and town. So you see over here, black boxes are must fill, okay? And black oval boxes are applicable, where applicable. And white boxes are optional. So these white boxes are optional. So you try to fill in all the black spots. So city and town is already filled in here. City, Vancouver, street direction, just leave it empty. And this part is automatically filled in once you uh, filled in your MS contract. And over here, just leave it empty because it's white. That's an agent. Sometimes there could be one or two or three agents. You fill in what's necessary and you put in your user ID, right? And then over here, it says showing appointment. Normally, you just click on touch base or this one, phone listing realtor first, right? That's the only two probably you will use, phone listing realtor first or touch base, depending on how the realtor's preference. And then you put your phone number for the appointment, phone number, and then put the name of the contact. Over here- What's the difference between yeah. um, the touch base and then the other one? Touch base is a software based. Basically, they use a the software to send a text message to the realtor. Sometimes realtors are so busy, they don't want to answer their phone, right? So they prefer people to contact them using touch base software. It's an app. Okay, yeah. And some realtors, they don't have touch base. They don't know how to use it. They prefer people to call them or text them. OK. Yeah. So over here, you put the phone number so people can text you or call you and find the right person to contact. And then next one would be choosing what kind of a property. Since we're using house, right? We're listing a house. House is called detached homes. So we select detached here. If you're listing a condo or townhouse, it's strata, we call attached. Attached means mm -hmm. townhouse and condos. We don't use multi-family. Um, we rarely use that. It's for commercial mostly. And then here for detached options, right? So you can choose single family home. That's what we usually do. Um, house with acreage, that means the house has a huge land. The land is over uh, an acre. So that's called house with acreage. And then townhouse. Uh, there are some townhouse very rarely seen that's also detached, but we, we don't use this one. Manufactured home, we don't deal with manufactured home a lot. Recreation, no. So usually you check on the first, first one or the second one only. So 90% would be the first one. And townhouse over here, you see condos, right? You, condos, you check on the first one. Uh, duplex, duplex is a house, but it's got two families, two different owners. That's called duplex. Then you check mm -hmm. on the second one. And then townhouse, you also check on here. So 130 style of home. So basically in Vancouver, a house would be normally um, th three stories with a basement. So including basement, it's three levels, right? Or you can say two story, two story with the basement sometimes. The older homes, like uh, houses over 50 years old, they could be two story with basement. And sometimes there are houses or duplex that are two stories with no basement. There are two levels from ground up. So you have to know uh, what kind of house it is in order for you to fill in this part. Next one would be title to land. Title to land, normally 90% would be uh, freehold non-strata. So for houses, usually there is no strata, but there are some houses in some area, they are freehold strata. Okay, so you have to make sure what type of house it is for you to fill in this part. And for UBC, SFU, or university land, or Indian reserve land, it's called leasehold. So you see here, First Nation lease, or leasehold prepaid non-strata, or leasehold non-prepaid strata. You know, um, Those are very rare situations. Uh, you don't usually see them. Normally, it's the first two. This white box, we don't care. And for seller's interest, if the seller is selling their own home, we use the first one, registered owner. If the seller is not selling their own home, they have authorized someone to sell their home. For example, the mother authorized the daughter to sell their home. They will have a document called power of attorney, right? And then you'll, select, you'll be selecting this one, power of attorney. 
if the parents pass away and the kids are the executor of this transaction, that will be an estate home. That's the most uh, commonly used three selections. We don't use the rest, okay? Court order, we rarely use it. Assignment contract, sometimes, sometimes. But uh, we don't usually use it for assignment contract, but sometimes we use it. So the normally, we just check on this one, the first one, registered owner. Occupancy, who's living in the house? You can say owner and tenant are living in the house, or only the tenant, or only the owner living in the house. Or if this is a new house, it may be under construction. Or the house can be vacant, nobody's living there, right? You can choose depending on your situation. Also, for this part, same thing. If the owner does not live in the house for PDS, we check on no. And then we tell people, um, owner never, seller never moved in, or tenanted rental property, right? You explain why. If you have a PDS, then we just click on yes. Then we leave this part empty. Year built. When was it built? Sometimes you can find it under tax sometimes, but sometimes we cannot find it under tax. Then you have to call the city hall to find out when was it built. And sometimes if this house was sold on uh, Paragon before, let's try one, for example, we always go to home, quick search. This is an easy way to do it. And then change the multiple into single. Otherwise you'll find a lot of properties. So let's try one property. Let's say 255 Garden and click enter. Oh, this is your page temporarily accessed and available. Let me try and refresh it. Try again. Okay. So if this house was sold on the market before, normally it'll say year built and age of the house on the listing, but this is not guaranteed. Look at the history part. There's a button with H says history. Click on that, see if it was sold before. So you can click the V number to see the history. So this one, it says 999. 999 means I don't know when it was built. You can say 999. And you can check some other listings. This one says 1926, right? You can check the last one. It says 1926. To be accurate, you can call the city hall and find out when this house was built. So now, if you don't know, you see here, put four nine, right? And then if you know, let's say it was built um, 1996, right? You just put in a number here. And then over here, suites, does it have a legal suite or a licensed suite or unauthorized suite? So this part is very important. If the house does not have a legal suite, but it does have a basement suite for people to rent and move in, you should check on here, unauthorized suite. Anything that's not legal or licensed, you check on unauthorized suite because maybe 50 to 80% of basement suite in Vancouver are unauthorized suite. If they don't have a suite downstairs in the basement or any suite, you check on none. And basement area. If the basement is fully renovated, you'll check on full, fully finished. Sorry, this one, fully finished. If it doesn't, it's not renovated, then you check on unfinished. If there's no basement, then you check on none. There's no basement area. Over here, um, you can see this one, right? We always check where measurements on using feet. We always check on this one, use feet. Frontage, frontage of the property. Same thing, um, you can find it in a city's website or you can use the history to check other people. It's frontage. You can see here, the frontage is says 46 by 138. 0.5. You can copy that into here first. Let's say 60 by 120. And now, can you open a browser? Let's say open a browser. I'll teach you how to find or more accurate measurement. So for example, if you want to find Vancouver, you'll go Vancouver GIS map. Google that. The first one comes up, Vancouver map. Click it. Welcome. And then we go in the first one, new Vancouver map property viewer. Okay, let's try this one. Now you enter the address. Okay, so we wanna check what's the lot size for 3076 Arbutus. So now click on the Arbutus. Okay, so we see this blue line, right? And you see two 
boxes. That means this lot, this house is built on two lots, two pieces of land. So you see two PID numbers. This is a special situation. You see that probably uh, less than 10% of the time. There are two PID numbers. So when you list it, you should list two PID numbers. So let's close that. We have a measurement tool here, measurement. We want to measure the frontage of the land, right? So let's do a measurement, click on this and choose on feet. Okay, we choose feet and we click on the corner here. We can make it bigger and smaller using the plus and minus sign here. We can make it a little bit bigger so we can do it more accurately. So click on that, make sure it's in uh, feet, right? Feet. Click the corner and click the other corner. Now we get about 53.8. And from this corner to the, and then we can click clear. And then we can do it again from this corner to that corner, right? That's 124.3 feet. You can play with this website later on. So you can find out more accurate um, lengths. And also if you wanna find out the size, you can choose square, square feet, click the four corners. Now you get a 6,946 square feet. Okay. Okay, so that's how you find out the size. And for this part, lot size, right? Once we have the front edge, we have the depth, then we calculate using that 6,000 U times 120, which is 7,200. And back here, this is inside of the house. How many floors? Maybe this house has three floors. So the first floor, the main floor, right? Maybe after measurement, it's about, let's say 1,000 square feet. And then this one says above main floor, means this usually the second floor, usually. Sometimes could be the third floor. The main floor means where the living room and the kitchens are. So above, maybe smaller, 900 square feet. Basement, maybe same 1,000 square feet, right? So now over here, you see it's calculated automatically, 2,900. So this measurement you get from the agent actual measurement, or when you're listing the property, you can use the history first. You can use the history measurement first, and later on, you can do a more accurate and modify it on your Paragon. Make sure this number is accurate. Otherwise, if the buyer buys the house and find out there's a big difference, the agent may be sued. Okay, next one, service connected. So this house has community, electricity, uh, there's natural gas, there's no lagoon, there's sanitized, sanitary sewer, and there's storm sewer, and uh, there's no septic tank, and there's water, yeah. So we check off on the ones that are applied. And sewer, same thing, uh, municipal, and water, also city, municipal. So for taxes, remember, we go to Paragon, we go to tax, right? If you have a listing here, there's also a shortcut. There's a tax button here. You can click on the tax button. It'll go to the tax detail directly. If this listing was sold on Paragon before, you can do it this way. Otherwise, you have to use tax and British Columbia. So over here, it says um, tax year 2020, right? And gross tax. So you just copy amount, how much paid, and copy and paste into here. Tax year, we remember was 2020. And tax included, always say no, no utility included. And we go to the next one, zoning. How to find zoning of the property? Okay, actually this is the uh, same thing. You can check on the history of the listing. Go back, it says zoning here. This one says RQ1. So you copy RQ1 into your zoning, but you want to be accurate, right? If you want to be accurate, you go to Vancouver GIS map. Vancouver GIS map can check on zoning and also check on the size of the lot. Let's say same thing, 3076 Arbutus. If we want to know the zoning, let's see, click on the PID number. Okay, so you see zoning information. For this lot here, it's C2 zoning. So you just copy C2 zoning into your database. So if we're doing that, we can use C2 for this Arbutus. This is Arbutus, right, Arbutus, and we use C2. For complex, this section is recommended for you to fill in. Uh, if this is a condo or townhouse, you put 
the name of the building. For example, uh, the building may be called the Telfer Walk, right? You put the name of the building or the townhouse. If you're listing a house, you can leave this part empty. And this part, direction, exposure, this is very important for detached homes. People want to know what is the backyard facing. They want to know so when they search, they can filter out the ones uh, does not match their need. For example, uh, the lot we have for Abutus is on Abutus. So the backyard of the house is actually facing um, east. On the right side is the yard, then it's east. If the yard is on the left side, then it's west. If the yard is on the north side, then we put north. Since you can see the building is right here, right? The building is right here. There's empty lot on the north side. So that means the yard is on the north. So we click on north. Construction. For house construction in Vancouver, it's always um, wood, but there are probably 30% of chance that people use concrete and steel to, to build a house. That time, at that situation, you use metal, right? You have to find out what construction they're using. Mostly it's wood, but sometimes it could be metal. For foundation, it's always concrete. So concrete perimeters, you use this one. Exterior, it's always mixed. So right now people don't build house with single material, it's always mixed, right? Sometimes the agent knows what kind of a material they use. They can say, oh, the, the wall, exterior wall could be concrete or it could be aluminum or it could be glass or you know whatever, or vinyl or wood or stucco. Usually you just pick on mixed. And ring screen, you can skip that. All new houses have ring screen now. And roof, you have to find out what kind of roof is it. Asphalt, usually it's asphalt. Sometimes it could be metal for more expensive homes. For condos, sometimes it could be tar and gravel or what they call torch on for those flat roofs. If you see those roofs are flat with black stuff on it, black asphalt, it's called torched on. And it could be wood roof. You know, those are wood little pieces, square pieces, wood one, you can see it. Or it could be concrete tile, those are tile roof. So that you had information you had to get from the agent. Parking. Parking, sometimes it could be a detached garage. Detached garage means it's separate from the house. The garage is not touching the house. Sometimes it could be attached garage, right? Attached garage means the house and garage within the same building. For condos and townhouses, um, it could be underground garage or it could be like above ground carport. So carport single, that means only one parking or carport multiple means more than one parking. And sometimes it could be carport and garage. So this part information you have to get from the agent. So covered park place must fill, even though it's a uh, white box. Covered means inside parking or with something covered on top, right? To prevent the rain. So you can put two cover parking and total parking. Total parking means all parkings, including the cover parking. Maybe you can park two indoor and you can park two outdoor. That means four parkings total. How many park, how many cars you can park on this property. And then next one would be um, site influence. Site influence, we can check on ones that are uh, applied. For example, some houses are located in a cul-de-sac. Cul-de-sac means a dead end road. It's, um, you know, it's good for family because kids playing there are more safe. No, not a lot of cars are traveled inside. And also you can put other stuff that are applied. Um, we don't use a lot of these. Mostly we use is cul-de-sac, this one, or central location. You can select maximum up to six. View. If you can see a view, you can say yes and explain maybe an ocean view. Or if there's no view, you say no. And you can put here view, you can select lake, you can see city view, you can see lake view or mountain view or ocean view. You can select maximum to three. Outdoor area. Sometimes the house has patio only or balcony only or decks or fenced yard. This one you can select maximum three or you can select this one. This one has balcony, patio and deck, right? And you can select fenced yard. So now you have four selections. Heated, right? So for house, usually it's got forced air using furnace. Furnace is using gas, right? You can use forced air, or if they don't have forced air, they can have baseboard, electric baseboard, depending on what kind of a house they have. Sometimes if they have radiant heat under the floor, right? That's called hot water. They use hot water, radiant heat to heat up the house. And for furnace, they use gas, right? If you have forced air, you can select natural gas. Fireplaces, maybe they have one fireplace and the fireplace is using, could be electric fireplace or a natural gas fireplace, usually one, one of these two. 
for floor finish, you can put hardwood floor or laminate floor. And also you can put mixed tiles, vinyl, right? If you know the information, you can fill in the floors. Features included, air condition, and you can choose this one, clothes washer, dryer, fridge, stove, dishwasher, and also microwave, right? And uh, sometimes for house, they have built-in vacuum, right? You can choose that one too. And also smoke alarm, security alarm, and uh, anything that applies in the house. This one's important, fixture to be removed. If they have an expensive um, art or something that's in the house, for example, or a chandelier, right? Chandelier. So you have to say here, this chandelier is not included in the sale price. If there's nothing, then just click no and leave this part empty. Same thing if you have any rented or leased fixtures. For example, security alarm sometimes are um, leased. Security alarm. Sometimes security alarm are leased paid by month to month, right? You can put security alarm is rented or leased. If there's nothing, just click no and leave it empty. Amenities, either air conditioning in the house or they're like um, condos usually have bike room for the condo and clubhouse. And also for concierge for condos and elevator for condos and gardens, exercise center, and sometimes in-suite laundry. Maximum you can select six over here. In this section, you can select up to six, right? In-suite laundry always for house and condos near one, they always have in-suite laundry. And they have swimming pool, indoor or outdoor, recreation center, and storage room for houses, uh, probably just in-suite laundry. And that's it. Sometimes house half elevator for those expensive houses and also air conditions. Next one would be the rooms, right? On the main floor, usually there is living room and there's dining room and there is kitchen. And sometimes walk kitchen. Walk kitchen means the second spice kitchen and family room and sometimes an eating area. You have to find out size in square foot, in foot, how long, right? You can see in this section here, your old listing. Again, you can use the old listing information at the beginning and then change it to more accurate information after you made a measurement. At the beginning, you can just use these numbers, copy and paste it into your web form. You can copy and paste, right? And then above, Above usually are the bedrooms, master bedroom, bedrooms, right? And probably there are four bedrooms upstairs and then below or basement. Basement usually are the recreation area or sometimes laundry are in the basement too. You can put laundry. Laundry could be on the main floor or could be on the second floor, could be anywhere. So you have to find out from the agent. Okay, so now you go to the bathroom. Sometimes when you have on the above, there's a bathroom that's within the master bedroom. It's called ensuite. So ensuite, you click on yes, that means inside the bedroom. Above, there may be another bathroom, two bathrooms, three bathrooms, right? Four piece. Each piece means where the water coming from. For example, a faucet means one piece. A toilet means another piece. A shower means another piece. A shower underneath it, there's a faucet for the bathtub is an, another piece. So total four pieces. Sometimes it could be double sink. So that means there are five pieces, right? So you have to count how many uh, places are, are plumbing, have plumbing, water coming out. So each piece is counted like that. It could be on main floor. Main floor, usually there's a powder room, there's toilet and the sink. That means there's two piece. And it could be one in the basement, could be four piece in the basement, right? Or three piece. If there's no bathtub, just the shower, then you could use three pieces. So realtor remark is the place where you wanna leave a message for other realtors to read about. For example, all measurements are approximately measured. Agent confirm if important. So normally you put a, a note message here. So your measurements are not 100% accurate. If it's important to the client, to the buyer, the buyer's agent has to confirm the measurements. Okay, so for every listing, just put a sentence like this over here. And this is your description. Description, you put a central location, whatever, the house is beautiful house or built by a um, famous architect, you know, put whatever the agent provide you with, copy and paste into this section here. This is where the buyers will see on the internet. And over here, always click yes. 
you want people to see the listing on the internet and you always want people to see the address on the internet. So click on yes and yes. If you have an open house date set up already, you can put the date here, but if not, just leave it empty. Page six is for strata title property for house and condos. Um, you can leave these two empty and strata fees. You can ask the agent, how much are they paying for, for this condo fee? Maybe $300 a month or maybe $600 a month. Who is the managing um, company? Put a company, maybe uh, rental management, put their phone numbers here. And if the building, this unit has a locker, storage locker, yes or no, find out from the agent. And over here, it says inside the building, what does the management fee include? So it may include a caretaker who's uh, doing cleaning and uh, it's including gardening. They have gardener, including gas maybe, uh, including garbage pickup, uh, including hot water management fee, recreation facility, recreation, the sewer, snow removal, and find out exactly what's included. Normally this information can be find, found uh, in the PDS. PDS is the property disclosure statement. Or you have to call the agent, um, the strata management agent to find out what's included. Um, they will ask you to look at the annual budget of the uh, annual budget of the building. So that is something else we can talk about. And you have to fill in if the building has restriction bylaws. Do they have age restriction? Age restriction means uh, they can put uh, anything over 19. Nobody under 19 can live in the building. That's age restriction. Or they can put um, age 65. Only people over 65 can live in the building. And the second one would be pet. Pet is just not allowed. So no pet allowed in the same building. Or they can say pet allowed. Normally you check on this one. They are allowed, but with restriction. They restrict the size and number of pets. And also same thing with rental. Rental either not allowed or rental allowed with restriction because they will restrict how long you can rent the property for or how many units can be in the same building when rented at the same time. Or they can say no Airbnb or no rentals below uh, less than six months, all sort of uh, restrictions. And also smoking restriction too, nobody can smoke in the building, right? So normally that's the three you would pick for condos and uh, townhouses. And there is a direction, directional exposure for strata. This one means the living room living room facing north, facing south, right? If you're facing north, living room, just click on north, that's it. And then on the bottom part, just leave it empty. You don't have to do anything. So this one would be the last one you do for data input. So there's a lot of information in here you have to fill in and a lot of the information you have to get from the agent. Otherwise you don't know the answer to.